Oh, hey, it's nice to see you. Go ahead and get comfortable, because today, we're going to be checking out my personal top 10 best friends in video games. You cozy? Alright, let's get this thing started. What better way to start off this list than talking about one of the first dynamic duos to ever show up in a video game? That's right, Mario and Luigi. The Mario brothers work really well together in a lot of ways. Watching Mario's heroic and confident personality clash with Luigi's overly timid and frightened self is beyond charming. Mario and Luigi portray that very strong brotherly bond that isn't seen too often in video games. And also, let's be honest, a Mario game always feels kind of empty when they leave out Luigi. Poor guy. I was never much of a PlayStation guy growing up. I was too busy playing my N64 and being a general weirdo. But one of the games that always had a strange appeal to me was Jack and Daxter. Jack and Daxter are a pair of troublemaking best friends who got in a little over their heads when Jack accidentally turned his good friend into a wisecracking, talking, weasel, otter thing. I don't know. Jack and Daxter are both a joy to watch. Jack is a silent type badass, while Daxter really loves to run his mouth. So you can imagine the fun antics they come across, and the kind of chemistry that they share. Honestly, just seeing two friends who are kind of hooligans cause so much destruction together and find endless joy in doing so is something that we definitely have a soft spot for. Let's learn our animals. This is a frog. This is a dog. This is a fox. And this is a falco. Wait. The Star Fox franchise is truly amazing. Or, you know, sometimes. Now, Fox and Falco have created a very interesting type of bond throughout the years. It's a friendship fueled by competition and the need to be better than the other. Fox isn't really the competitive type, but Falco's abrasive personality just brings out the worst in him. Kind of like when you play a video game with that friend who just doesn't seem to know how to have fun, and it rubs off on you, making you just as competitive as they are. It's an interesting type of friendship. Sonic and Tails. I'll admit, when I played Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the first time ever and was greeted with this cute little guy on the title screen, I was so happy. And when I actually started to play the game and realized he was going to be following me around this whole time, I was even happier. And I'm not too sure why. I think just having someone be by your side at all times is really comforting. You're no longer alone in this adventure. Through thick and thin, Tails is here to help. At least, as much as he can. Yeah, he wasn't as fast as Sonic, but he was able to fly, which is really useful and could come in handy. Also, if you had a friend over, they would be able to take control of this adorable fox. I'm not sure what else I can say. It just feels right. As right as a talking hedgehog and fox could be. Who here has heard of a game called A Boy and His Blob? It's easily one of the most charming and heartwarming games to ever exist. You play as a sweet little boy who, one night, encounters an alien life form taking shape as this adorable white blob. It doesn't take long before they feel some kind of a connection and befriend one another. The Blob is a really fascinating character. It's able to shapeshift into a ton of useful items simply by feeding it jelly beans. It's a very loyal and friendly companion, best resembling a dog in a lot of aspects. Because our main hero is a young human boy, he's very limited to doing... Well, a lot of things. That's where the Blob comes in, to help his friend. You sense a very strong aura of innocence, hearkening back to the times when you were just a kid, with a heart full of discovery, mystery, and adventure. As kids, we've all felt pretty lonely at one point, and craved some kind of eccentric companion, usually in the form of an imaginary friend. The Blob is pretty much the best embodiment of that childhood partner we've always wanted. Lloyd and Genus from Tales of Symphonia. These two found their way onto this list because Tales of Symphonia is my favorite game ever. Lloyd and Genus have been best friends since childhood, but Genus is a half-elf, a race of people that is very discriminated against. Everyone is always looking down upon the half-elves and treating them like garbage. Because of this, Genus doesn't have a lot of friends, except 
for Lloyd. Lloyd doesn't care about Genus's race, or how everyone will choose to view him for hanging out with the half-elf. Lloyd only cares about Genus as a person, having very open arms towards him. Thanks, Lloyd. Hmm? For what? For just treating me like... Treating you like what? Nah, never mind. And throughout this entire game, you can tell that these guys are just the best of friends, always making smart-ass remarks to each other, but never in a mean-spirited way. Hey everybody! Lloyd just told me he's gonna have an affair with a married woman! Lloyd, how could you? And when it comes down to it, Lloyd and Genus always have each other's backs, and will be there for one another. Uh -huh. <laughs> Obviously, the Baron Bird would find their way onto a list about friends. Honestly though, literally everyone has talked about Banjo and Kazooie, sometimes in really great depth. So there really isn't anything new that I feel like I can bring to the table. It's freaking Banjo and Kazooie. They're legendary. The Last of Us is hands down one of my favorite games to be released in recent years, mainly because I love shooting monsters in the face. BAM! But the main reason I love this game is because of the beautiful relationship of Joel and Ellie. Joel is a man who lost his daughter, and Ellie is a young girl growing up in this post-apocalyptic world without parental guidance. So naturally, they were bound to meet, and there's going to be some pretty strong father-daughter chemistry here. Joel wants to look out for Ellie, almost like she's a second chance to protect the daughter that he lost. And Ellie desperately needs a father, because no matter how old she tries to act, she is still just a kid. It's a very powerful relationship to watch unfold, and listening to Troy Baker's sexy voice is always a plus. There's a lot of Pokemon in Pokemon. That's repetitive. And of course, we all have our favorites. But let's be honest with ourselves. Nothing beats the emotional connection you have than when you're given your first starter Pokemon. The bond between a trainer and their first Pokemon is sacred. You choose your desired type, give them a name, and build up their moveset. You get to watch them evolve and become powerful if you're willing to put in the time. They're with you from the very start, when you were both walking in tall grass and scratching Pidgeys, all the way to collecting your final gym badge and becoming a Pokemon Master. Everyone has that starter from any generation of Pokemon that is particularly special to them. Mine is Cyndaquil. Who's yours? Ness and all of his companions from Earthbound. Now, I know this list has been mainly comprised of groups of two, but I just couldn't do that here. Earthbound is a game about being a kid. There's a ton of mechanics and story elements that revolve around the psyche of being a child and adventuring off into the huge world unprepared, thinking we know more than we actually do. So Ness going on this massive adventure with some pals is one of those reassuring things we can all relate to. Even as we get older, we'll always be kids at heart. We'll always need our friends to be by our side when things get too scary. That never changes. And a friend can be literally anybody. Heck, Ness is friends with a bee. So for you, a friend can be a family member, someone you watch on YouTube, a pet, a stuffed animal, an imaginary friend, or a video game. Anyone or anything to help your inner child get through the scary times. It's out there somewhere. <laughs>